เกิดดนี้ So I'm asking him, is this for when the opponent is coming towards you? And he's like, if the opponent is standing still. And you fake your teeth, and they don't go anywhere. Throw the jab, because maybe they're anticipating your teeth, and so they're going to try to parry it. When they try to parry it, see how my hand is coming down, and so it actually makes his jab more available. If I'm coming towards him, that's when he's going to pivot off to the side. But if I'm not moving back or forward, he can just throw that jab. <laughs> Look how pretty his teeth is. We're faking teeth right now, but his actual teeth is so beautiful. <laughs> so he's saying, "Don't walk, just stay still." So if he's not coming towards me and I fake that teeth, and he's staying where he is, or he's trying to bat my teeth away, that's when I throw the jab. I'm asking, does the foot hit and the jab hit at the same time? Yeah. So you're kind of stomping your foot down and jabbing at the same time because you're taking a little bit of a step forward for the impact of your jab. So here's me explaining to him that I have to think about coming forward instead of up because my body just wants to jump up. But it's a slide. It's the same as like a jab and then a longer jab. There we go. In my head, when I thought about like jab and then longer jab, it, without verbalizing it, explained to my feet what they needed to be doing because I understand it for the upper body part. But here we're having a discussion about how to use this, which is whether or not the opponent goes anywhere off of your first tee. The first one is not super powerful, so they might not move very far back. They might actually fortify themselves against the teeth as a like, I can take that one, so I'm just going to stand right here. Which means the second one, which is more powerful with the slide, is just going to like launch them. Here I'm clarifying that on the second teeth, you actually have to turn your body a little bit. l u k t o m is sibyotong. Sibyotong is where. s a m a r Hayakarun, trained. So even though he didn't use the Sidiotong name, he was training at Sidiotong. s a m a r is, by all accounts, by anyone you ever talk to, the best teeper. <laughs> he turned sideways on his teeth a lot. There are a lot of benefits to turning sideways the way Tom is showing me here. One is that with your foot sideways, it's much harder to catch. Because you don't have the heel as like a little handle, but what k r u t o m is explaining here is that on that first t e e p you're going to be hitting with the ball of your foot. On this second t e e p you actually have a range of what you can be hitting with. I could feel that the power of that punch required me to step outside of his stance, but towards his stance more. I was kind of sliding out. Laterally, and I was just too far away from him. So when you step to the outside of your opponent, you actually want to step towards their foot when you make that pivot. So see, I'm, I could have thrown a kick there, but I'm close enough that I can also throw punches. So what strikes are available to you are just entirely based on how far away you are when you land. He wants that to be faster. That's that like um, switch step to the jab, which is actually across. <laughs> so he's saying because I've done this switch to land my jab as a left cross. Now that I'm in southpaw, he's like, stay in southpaw, throw a bunch of things from here, and then eventually you can switch back. This is amazing for confusing your opponent because they're like, why the hell is everything backwards? Like their brain can't track it fast enough to know what's going on, which is why being a switching fighter can be incredibly beneficial for confusing your opponent, let alone the balance and symmetry. Oh, look at his feet! I want my feet to do that. His stance when he does those switches, like the the distance between his feet, is incredible. So now he's having me switch back and forth, like basically feel 
how you can constantly use the same techniques to switch your stance back and forth. And it should be the same. You should be really ambidextrous in this. So he's getting me to block by throwing a bunch of kicks. And then when I'm on one leg, he switches to that um, cross, showing how it works as a fake. So here I can comfortably throw all of the techniques he's been showing me so far with the jab, the fake, the teep, and it can switch back and forth from southpaw and orthodox completely fluidly. So he's saying it's really important to gum, which is in Thai to kind of like hunch. He says gum na specifically, which means to put your face down. So by tucking your head, you're protecting yourself from elbows, for sure, but you can also see your opponent's legs. If you can see their legs, you don't necessarily have to feel the timing of their knees. You can see it. It's a little bit of a cheat. If you look at um, the session with Satan Mung Lek, Satan Mung Lek is always watching the legs as he's clinching. He's got this great like look down thing. You can definitely feel clinching without being able to see the feet. Don't rely on visibility in order to understand, but it's definitely a benefit to have more than one sense of being able to see and feel where someone's going. But the important part about tucking your head in the clinch is to protect from elbows.